So I worked this job uh, with Edible Arrangements in Selma, Texas, which is close to San Antonio. Um, what ended up happening was I was working for them through a job app and I didn't complete my job because I would have had to go all the way back to Edible Arrangements to clock out. So I said, well, that's like a whole hour away. Like I'm driving everywhere. There's a lot of wear and tear on my car. I will just message, you know, this job app and tell them that I couldn't clock out. So what ended up happening was Edible Arrangements tried to say that I didn't work. Now that's intriguing because I talked to the manager and the manager is the one that sent me out to do the work. So I messaged the manager and I told her, I'm like, well, this job isn't paying me um, because they're saying that you guys said that I didn't work. And she's like, I don't know what they're talking about. I wrote a letter, you know, I wouldn't try to play you. The problem was Edible Arrangements was trying to uh, pay me by delivery and not by hour. I'd sent all sorts of evidence to this job app that I had worked, like text messages between myself and the manager. They took the side of Edible Arrangements. And so I said, okay, well, maybe this is one of those things that I have to just let go and let the father. And so I forgot about it for a while. About two months after the fact, I was cleaning my car and I had found these receipts of the deliveries I did for Edible Arrangements. So I sent them to this job app and they said, oh, okay, cool we'll pay you but if we find out that they blah 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 then you know we're gonna take the money back and I was just like that's super silly I started thinking to myself what if I died in between getting that money back is it still my money or would it belong to edible arrangements or the job app I did work for it and so personally I would like the money but if I'm dead obviously I can't get the money but I would like it to go to who it needs to go to to help out so my family or my friends or something along the lines of that. We go into work and we're expecting to get paid, you know. How would people like it if they went into work and they literally weren't paid for anything and they were literally treated like crap all the time? So I think most people would agree that it's not okay for a job not to pay you for the work that you have done. You know, you're in some kind of contract. That's why you have W-2s and why you fill out applications and all these kinds of things. Um, in order to get paid for the work that you do. If you did a lot of work, let's say that, you know, you're working for Amazon or something like that and you made $2,000 um, and Amazon was basically like, well, we're just not gonna pay you and you end up dying a week later, would you want that $2,000 to go to your friends and your family, maybe to help with your funeral or something at least? Would you prefer that Amazon keeps it even though Amazon is super rich and just, they don't really need the money, but they're just being greedy or whatever the deal is. So the reason why I bring this up is because I know where I descend from. I descend from the Hebrews. I got to thinking about reparations for that reason. There's a lot of people, a lot of Gentiles that are against reparations. And I understand why, because you know, it's gonna raise your taxes more than likely. You know, you feel like you're paying for something um, in which you had no involvement in, which is fair. But I also want to bring to the light that people have to pay for the curses of their ancestors. Those curses are passed down. That's why we're scattered through four corners of the globe. This is why we're a byword. This is why people think of us and they think, oh my gosh, like I gotta lock my doors around this person. She's, she's black. It's a curse concerning these things. And there is also a curse concerning the descendants of slave owners. The thing is you have to pay. And I will give you the biblical references concerning that. Uh, it's going to be Deuteronomy 15, and I'll start from verse 1. At the end of every seven years, you make a release of debts, and this is the word of the release. Every creditor is to release what he has loaned to his neighbor. He does not require it of his neighbor or his brother, because it's called the release of Yahuwah. So firstly, these Hebrew slaves, these black people that were slaves over in the U.S. and over in the Caribbean and in South America and all over the world, they should have been released after seven years. But, I mean, let's be real. Like... They don't follow the laws of God, and so they do what they want. They needed slave labor because they wanted to build their own kingdom. America is Egypt, by the way. That's why you see a pyramid on the back of the $1 bill and the bird of Ra as well. You will find pyramids all over South America, and even in Memphis, Tennessee, they discover there's a pyramid there. Memphis is even the name of a city in Egypt. So you already did wrong by not releasing his people after seven years. Be on guard, lest there be a thought of Belial in your heart, saying the seventh year, the seventh, the year of release is near and your eyes evil against your poor brother, and you shall give him not. That sounds familiar. And he shall cry out to Yahuwah against you, and it shall be a sin in you. You shall certainly give to him, but you didn't. And your heart shall not be grieved when you give to him, because for this reason, Yahuwah your Elohim does bless you in all of your works, and in all of which you put your hand. Because the poor one does not cease from the land, therefore I am commanding you, saying, you shall certainly open your hand to your brother, to your poor, and to your needy one in your lands. 
So they were supposed to give to the people that were their servants, that were their slaves. They were supposed to set them free after seven years and give to them because you need to be paid for your work. And that wasn't free labor. That labor has to be paid for. That's what reparations are. And I know a lot of people say, oh, well, welfare. Well, let's do the comparison. 400 years of slavery and what? When did welfare start? Maybe the 70s or something like that. So 50 years of welfare and mostly non-Hebrews and non-Hamites are on welfare. And plus, I personally never was on welfare. I have worked and I've paid my way. So it does not apply to every Hebrew. It does not apply to every Hamite. And it's not enough. Now I'm going to go over to Exodus 12. We'll start on verse 33. And the Mitzrites were strong on the people to hasten to send them away out of the land. For they say, we are all dying. And the reason why they were dying was because they were still oppressing the Hebrews. After the father had said, let my people go. You're still oppressing the Hebrews. You are still killing innocent Hebrew men. You still have sundown towns. You're still hanging people. You're still putting people in prison for greater sentences for less of a crime. You're still using labor that is not well paid for. I was looking at a job for $10 an hour yesterday. You're doing this on purpose because you're only giving people enough where they can barely survive. And that's how you are oppressing them. And it's not only Hebrews, it's also Gentiles, it's Hamites, it's everyone. You're doing this to everyone. But because Gentiles often look like you, a whole lot less spiritual attack that comes against them. We still are under the curse of Deuteronomy 28. So we were sent on slave ships to four corners of the globe with yokes around our necks. I can't go a day without someone giving me a dirty look or locking her car around me or just saying ridiculous things to me for no reason. It's unfortunate that is so, but he did say we will be a byword around the world and we are a byword around the world and there is no other group of people who is a byword like people that look like us. So there's no excuse. It's not those people over in Israel. The people took their dough before it was leavened, having their kneading bowls bound up in their garments on their shoulders. And the children of Israel had done according to the word of Moshe, and they had asked from the Mitzrites objects of silver, objects of gold, and garments. And Yahuwah gave the people favor in the eyes of Mitzrites. So they gave them what they asked for, and they plundered the Mitzrites. So this was arranged by the father, the reparation for the Hebrews for their time in slavery, because the father did not lie about Deuteronomy, saying that you need to give to those who have served you. Like I said, are we still waiting on the 40 acres in the mule? That was their way of blocking us from any kind of success. If our ancestors would have got 40 acres, holy crap, that's a lot of land. We could have built on it. We would not be in the position that we are in now, in my opinion. That's why so many people try to keep generational wealth. They try to keep land. They try to keep houses because they know that their sons can use it and their grandsons and their great grandsons. They stripped that away from us when they decided they didn't want to give us what they owed us. And now you have people saying, well, I'm not paying any of this. That was my ancestors. You actually have to apologize for the sins of your ancestors. And I did it myself. I apologize for the sins of my forefathers because it was the right thing to do. God tells us we are supposed to do that, by the way, because their curse can dwell on us if we do not apologize for the sins of our ancestors. So it's coming to that time of payment, of reparations for our ancestors being in slavery and the spiritual oppression that we are still going through because of this. Things are going to get worse and worse and worse for the nations of this world, especially America. Remember in Exodus, Pharaoh did not want to let Yah's people go. He wanted to keep them because he was building off their backs. A lot of people also talk about, well, you know, I work and I slave away all the time and, you know, I don't get reparations for it. You are getting paid. Those people didn't get paid. And on top of that, they had their children taken away from them. And not only out their arms, but out their bellies sometimes. Because sometimes these slave masters would cut open the bellies of young black women who were pregnant and sometimes impregnated by them through rape. They would hang the black men. They would do what you call buck breaking, where they made one black male specifically impregnate the black female slaves so they can have babies and sell off their babies to other people. They would rip some people apart from limb to limb. They would feed young black children to alligators. This is how crazy these people were. If you tell your boss to go F off, you're not going to be hung for it. We are owed. The time is coming where reparations are coming. And although they're probably going to give it right before the U.S. dollar crumbles so we can't do much with it, um, at the end of the day, do what you can with it. Like, go buy some land somewhere real, real, real quick. I mean, my question is, is it going to matter the money that you pay in taxes to give to these people? Because they're going to change the dollar anyway into a digital currency. You are literally not going to miss anything. You will own nothing and be happy is what they have said. Like I said, ask yourself the question, if you made some money, $2,000 and you died, would you not want it to go to the people that you love the most? So you guys be blessed and have a good one. Bye.